All right, hey guys, welcome back to videos that I do, I guess. Um, all right, so I get emails all the time from stepmoms who are upset because they wanna have a positive relationship with their husband's ex, but their husband's ex hates them or refuses to acknowledge their existence or refuses to communicate with them or just does not want anything to do with them. So this is a really frustrating thing. And as a stepmom, if you're really trying to forge that co-parenting relationship and someone wants nothing to do with you, it's kind of a tricky thing to navigate. Now in a perfect world, a stepmom and a mom would get along. Everyone would co-parent and act like adults and be mature and always act in the best interests of the kids and recognize that you're on the same team. But I am sure I don't have to tell you, we do not live in a perfect world. In fact, it is so common for a stepmom and a mom to not get along that when they do get along, you, like people in society will say, whoa, that is so weird that they get along. Like it actually makes people uncomfortable. But that's a different topic for a different day and a different video. So, but today I'm gonna share with you eight things that I think that you can do or I think that you should do if you really want a positive relationship with your stepchildren's mom and at this point you're feeling like she is just not interested. All right, so the first thing is I think you should start with baby steps. Like if you come out guns a blazing being like, hey, let's have wine together. Let's like have this positive co-parenting relationship. She's gonna be like, okay, this chick is coming on way too strong. So you need to take baby steps. So what I mean by that is like, say you're at the arena, give her a little smile, you know, be warm and welcoming, wave at pick up and drop off. Just start with baby steps so that she knows that you are a kind person who is welcoming that type of relationship. She may have had an idea in her head of how you are. She may have just thought in her head that you were cold and didn't like her and didn't want this type of relationship. So giving her that, you know, body language that it's a welcome, safe space to communicate in can go a long way. The second thing that I think you should do if you want a positive relationship with your husband's ex-wife is stay out of the issues that she and your partner have. So if they're having conflict about finances or legal issues or something with the kids, do your best to stay out of it. I know it's hard. I have made this mistake several, several, several times. But honestly, if I could go back and do anything different, I would stay out of their crap. Be a support for your partner behind the scenes, but you do not need to lead the conversation with these issues. You are not going to solve their problem. Honestly, guys, it is so important to remember that you cannot fix what you didn't. Great. Third thing is, is reach out, like extend that olive branch and make sure your intentions are clear. So say you want to have a relationship with her, send her an email or send her a text message and say, Hey, you know, this is a little weird. This is a little awkward. Um, but I wanted to reach out and just let you know that I'm definitely open to sitting down, having a conversation. I'd love to sit down and figure out if we can get on the same page with the kids, like whatever it is that you want to say, reach out and see if she's interested. You never know. She may have walls up right now. She may be kind of cold and standoffish with you as a defense mechanism because she wants to protect herself from feeling rejected by you. She may assume that you do not want to have a positive relationship. She may assume that you're like team husband and aren't, you know, looking for a positive co-parenting relationship there. She doesn't know you. So reach out, make sure those intentions are clear and show her what it is that you're actually looking for. Now you need to manage your expectations on this though, because you could get no response. You could get shut down hard. Uh, you don't know how she is going to react to this. So manage your expectations. And if she does shut it down, make sure you don't take it personally. Now, before you send that letter, here's a little piece of advice that you're going to want to take. And this is true for so many situations. Write your letter, write your text message, put yourself out there, be vulnerable, and then don't send it. Do not send it right away come back to it and proofread it like 24 hours later, read it and think about how it would be received on her end. Like how is she going to receive this letter? And when I say that, I mean like, are there any passive aggressive comments in there? Like, how, is there anything that she's gonna find insulting? Sometimes when we write things and we put ourselves out there, we don't think about how it could be perceived on the other end. Again, it's one of those situations where it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So get your feelings out there, take a little breather and come back and do a little proofread and tweak anything that may come off in the wrong way. The next thing is please do not take it personally if she is not interested. 
chances are she's not going to be interested. Chances are your original gut feeling about what she wants for a relationship with you was true. We're women. Our gut is basically right all the time, right? So my advice is do not take it personally because at this point, it's probably not about you. Unless you've been terrible to her and that, that in that situation, it probably is about you, but chances are it's not. So when I say that, I mean, it may not be about you. It might be about what you represent. It may be about where she's at and processing the end of her marriage or how she's dealing with things in her life. And you are a reminder of things, you know, her failures and things that didn't work out. Like she might be really struggling with the fact that another woman is taking care of her kids and really just like not in the mental space to have that relationship yet. There are so many other factors that play into the mom and stepmom relationship that have nothing to do with the people and the personalities themselves. Number six, apologize. And maybe this could have been earlier when you sent the letter, but if you have ever done anything or acted in a way that you look back and you're like, uh, I don't feel like that was the best way to react, apologize for it. Look, being a stepmom has not brought out my shiniest qualities at times. There have been times when I've acted and reacted in ways that don't really represent who I am and what I'm all about. The same goes for her. So if you have screwed up or if you have overstepped or if you, you know, one time ran your mouth and you wish you didn't, send a little message, say, hey, about this situation, I just wanted to apologize for how I reacted. Um, it wasn't really me. And I just really wanted to put that out there and let you know that I am very sorry. Don't send an apology expecting for an apology back, okay? It maybe won't be reciprocated. Just put it out there and be real and vulnerable. Like At this point, what do you have to lose? Number seven, so say we're at the point where she is like not into it. You have apologized. You have extended the olive branch. You were smiling and you're all nice at the hockey arena and doing all the things. You've asked her for wine and it's like radio silence or she's told you it's not going to happen, girl. What do you do then? I'd still keep it business-like, still be the bigger person, still be kind and empathetic. Don't get into the place where you're like, well, screw her. If she doesn't want a relationship with me, I don't want a relationship with her. Guys, it's not about you. It's about where everyone is at and dealing with all the things that come with divorce, okay? So keep it business-like, keep it friendly, still be respectful because you don't wanna do anything that is going to jeopardize having the type of relationship that you want down the road. She may just not be ready yet. I speak to so many stepmoms who have super high conflict relationships and then like five years later, all of a sudden they're all great. Like healing has to happen. Sometimes you have to let time do its thing. There's a, so many contributing factors here, okay? The last thing is, is just let it go. You cannot make someone have a relationship with you if they don't wanna have a relationship with you. She's under no obligation to have a co-parenting relationship with you. So if she's not in the place or is not accepting of you or doesn't wanna have that type of relationship with you, Sure, it's not in the kid's best interest. Sure, it would be great if everyone could all get along. Yes, all of these things are great, but sometimes people are just not ready to do that yet. So you have to respect where she's at, even if you don't actually respect it, and just accept it and let it go and stop trying. You know, I get messages all the time from people on Facebook, often after a really hearts and sparkles co-parenting relationship meme goes around uh, Facebook, it goes viral because the mom and the stepmom are at the hockey game in the mom and stepmom jerseys, or, you know, there's this Huffington Post article where, you know, everyone has these joint family gatherings together. And I get people reach out to me and they're typically not in blended families. And they say, this is how it should be. And you know, when I get those messages, part of me is like, yeah, that would be great if everyone could have that, but that's not right for all families. It takes a lot of willing parties and a lot of maturity and a lot of processing and emotional healing to get to that point. And sometimes people just aren't there. So you just gotta respect where people are at and you know, it is what it is. All right guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully this helps some of the stepmoms who are struggling and you know, trying to have that relationship with their husband's ex and just feel like they're getting shut down. You know, there's only so much you can do. You cannot control how someone else acts, reacts, or perceives a situation. You just gotta, I don't know, like I said, keep doing you. 
you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video with someone who needs it. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe. And below, I have linked a whole bunch of resources for stepmoms. So if you are a stepmom, if you're seeking next level support, next level conversation, you wanna dive deep into some more tips and strategies on how to thrive, uh, and amongst the extra stressors that come with being a stepmom, they're all linked below. And I'll see you in the next one.